Alla behöver vi wifi. Frågan är, vill du ha ett stilrent vitt torn eller ett svart monster? Häng med när vi pratar om framtidens nätverk med Netgear. Presenteras i samarbete med LG. Vi har hittat in här i soffan med Netgear och ska prata om nätverk. Alla behöver vi nätverk, trådlösa, trådade, vad det nu än kan vara. Det här är framtiden. Vi har sett Netgears nya produkter och med mig här har jag deras produktspecialist Lionel Paris och vi tänkte prata närmare om trådlöst och trådat nätverk. Lionel, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Can you please tell me just a bit uh, about yourself uh, so people know? I, I'm the director of product marketing uh, for consumer product in Europe. So everything which is Wi-Fi, power line, camera, video surveillance, switches, and so and so and so. Every single consumer product you can buy on the networking. Awesome. We're going to talk about networking, so I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Uh, we, have, we have gotten some uh, information here today about your new products. I want to start actually with products that you might actually not have in the market yet. I mm -hmm. know you don't have them in the market yet. <laughs> uh, it's something that our readers have been very interested in. It's the new upcoming Ethernet standards with yep. 2.5 and 5 gigabit per second yep. on the current cables that we have. We're really looking forward to that. And the question I would also like to ask and get answered, why haven't we seen this before? It feels like it's something that a lot of users have been waiting for. I mean, yeah. the Wi-Fi speeds are ridiculously high mm -hmm. these days. Uh, <laughs> is there any specific reason why it hasn't yeah. come? Yeah, I, I, I think uh, the more the month and the quarter are passing, the more I'm seeing you every time we met. Yeah. Look, I got a new Nighthawk, I got a new, yeah. and the speed is increasing, 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 increasing. So now we're reaching a point where we actually saturating, like you said, the poor only one gigabit link we have. So we tried to fix this a uh, couple of months ago when we introduced the new Nio X8, because that was the first router for consumer capable of having two gigabit port that you can aggregate. So because we already knew that there was a bottleneck, very obviously, on the network. So that's the only thing we could have done with the current generation. Now that we get a new standard, now we're going to be able to build against this new product supporting that new technology. So as opposed, as opposed to get two one gigabit link being two gig, then we're going to have one cable supporting up to five gig. That's drastic. And we need it because the Wi-Fi is keep, the wi -Fi speed is keep increasing. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. The obvious question, when will we see these products in the market? So um, I think right now the standard has just been ratified now. So from that point, then we need silicon. From silicon, then we can actually be the product. So that's going to take a while. I will expect a year will pass by the time we're going to see the first multi gigabit switch in the market. So let's take it a year from now, but around back to school next year, EFA time frame, we should be good to get those consumer switches. Awesome. Uh, one last question about those switches. Will that be like a switch with one of these ports or would it actually be, for example, a router with six ports and all of them supporting multi gigabit? So we're going to do all of them, gig, 2.5 and 5. And based on the product you get on the other side, the switch will switch. This is what they do. Okay, <laughs> so multi gigabit on all cables if you have the devices. Yep, of course. Awesome. Uh, you, you mentioned 10 gigabit. Yep. Uh, we actually have a product here that you uh, talked about today yes. that actually has a 10 gigabit exactly. port. Exactly. So that's the first one uh, that is using a 10 gigabit port. Uh, and, and again, because we know this is clearly a bottleneck today, the more we're increasing the speed on Wi-Fi, we got to find a way to increase the bandwidth on the traditional Ethernet. If you look at a consumer today, what would you say would be realistic for a consumer today, uh, November 2016, to use with their 10 gigabit connection? Yeah, I mean, you can. I mean, we do have the switches for this. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, again, like I mentioned previously, you, you get a, um, there is a certain number of steps you need. First, you need the switch. Secondly, if you have a 10 gig here, potentially you have a NAS. We also support 10 gig on the NAS that we also introduced in IFA. So now, one piece after the other, uh, the whole puzzle is getting together. So it's it's one piece at a time. But uh, from a consumer approach, thinking that 10 gig is going to be real in the next month or so, no. It's a step-by-step -step type of approach. And you also need to get the bandwidth. I mean, you need to get the equipment, the NAS, the PC. The whole ecosystem needs to support it, not just one product. Exactly. Everything needs to come together. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, looking at the 60 gigahertz band, uh, yes. as you said, AD is coming. We still have very few products in the market. Or Correct. Of course, this, you're not having a majority of product because this is 
really fresh. Yeah. But again, this comes in addition to the traditional Wi-Fi. 11 AD is, does not replace 11 AC. It's coming in top, two different technology. Uh, 11 AD is really meant to be super high bandwidth at a short distance, okay. which use case like dropping video from a phone, dropping video from a tablet to a network, uh, transferring high bandwidth file like, uh, you know, Blu-ray, VR, and all, all those high bandwidth, high consuming application. If you're short distance than your router, then you can get this done extremely fast. That's the point. Yeah, we, you, you mentioned the 11AX. Uh, yeah. That's some ridiculous speeds we're talking about uh, in the long run with yes. the five gigahertz so band. We're gonna start at 10 gig up to 25, just to give you an idea. <laughs> That's pretty damn fast. So, so 11AC will stop a little bit more, uh, sorry, 11AC will stop a little bit less than 10 gig. Yeah. That's gonna be the end of the current generation that we know. Yeah. When the next one will start at 10 gig, up to 25, this is really big. Will that be with the same range that we have today with the 5 gigs? Yeah, the, uh, the good gig. thing about this incoming standard is because the Wi-Fi alliance, uh, they, they learned from their mistake in the past. So they took the same ev path of evolution. So the current standard will be compatible with the new. It will be completely integrated. Actually, the technology we use, the base of it, 2.45, will not change. It will still be the same. We're going to play with the quad modulation. We're going to play with the channel frequency, which can increase from 160 to more, the number of antenna, and all those things all together will allow to move to the next level. I mean, we, we're of course talking of theoretical speeds here, of course, yeah, as always yeah, yeah. with Wi-Fi, but still one has to think how is Ethernet going to keep up when we're talking about 25 gigabit per second Wi-Fi mm. with the 5 gigahertz, with, uh, which has actually good range. Yep. Uh, how does the future of networking actually looks when it comes to Wi-Fi uh, compared to... Yeah, uh, clearly the, um, the word is still, I will say, one, of, one piece of the equation but that's gonna be just a small component. Yeah. Well, the complete world is gonna to switch to Wi-Fi. Because, I mean, look at this way, every single Wi-Fi device we do buy today, IT, audio video, smart, home, IoT, everything by default is coming wireless. So that's gonna be the de facto way you're gonna connect. So the wire will be used for, you know, a bunch of computer, NAS, or, you know, some, some device that will not be key finally at the end of the equation. Yeah. Um, so the, f the the wireless is going to take over definitely. Uh, talking about wireless taking over and different wireless technologies, I have one other new product here. Yes, better. So what I would like to highlight is that you're you're famous for your Nighthawk routers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they look like uh, spaceships, yeah, like they're most a high bit performance. Star uh, Trek, <laughs> yeah. Star Wars, a little uh, bit. Yeah. I, I love tech, I like, I like and love high speeds, but mm. still it's a product that a lot of people have a hard time putting out in the living room and stuff. Uh, yes. So I guess uh, it's this black. is, yeah. It's so, massive, <laughs> yeah. you know. So this is your answer to the more yeah. stylish router? So, Orbi is meant to do two things. The first one, as you can see, the design. I mean, we want something more slick. I mean, that you can fit in any place of your home. Um, people know the, the WAF, Woman Acceptance Factor. I mean, we talk about it, we laugh about it, yeah. but when it comes to that size of product, it's pretty real. Yeah. So uh, we need to get an answer to the design. For we spent the last five years putting in a gigantic amount of power into the Snyhawk dual core now this is quad core so we we keep pushing 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 the limit of what this technology can do but if you live in a big home like here today then unlikely one is going to be enough so orbi is meant to be used in those situations where you have a large room to cover you get multi-floor you get multi-room to cover and then you need the system no longer a single product with a super duper amount of power but more a multiplicity of product that you're gonna spread across your home to get a complete wireless coverage. That's the idea. Yeah. The, the question that I've been asking myself is, is this like just the first step of the future of Wi-Fi that these kinds of robotic uh, space-like routers is <laughs> slowly dying like dinosaurs and uh, these uh, more stylish routers no. are gonna take over or is it just no, two different... Uh, no, I don't think segments. so. I think we get 
first of all, we get two different type of audience yep. and also two different type of application. Not everyone in Sweden, I, I think, live in a house like this, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so you would not necessarily need that amount of power, multi-flow, etc. So we are going to continue to build Nighthawk because, um, first of all, we get already a good customer base and very good return of this lineup. And secondly, some people want to get the latest and the greatest. And like we did today at Avenedi, for example, is here in this lineup today and we'll remain here for a few time, for a few years. Yeah. While here, we're answering a b the maximum possible broad audience with this product and we're not looking people which are specialists. It's also the second key difference. In addition to the design, the system is pretty much working itself. So no longer a techie question, no technical wording. Uh, actually, you don't even know what's going on. Uh, if you don't know what's going on, you will not know it. And that's good because we, we are not asking you to become a specialist. Yeah. Um, the Wi-Fi wi is here to stay. Uh, also, Ethernet. Uh, we'll see higher speeds yeah, coming forward. We'll definitely develop because we need it because yeah. we don't want this to become a, a bottleneck of your yeah. network at yeah. the end of the day. <laughs> ja, idag är det dags för kaffebröd, nya mus. Ja, e-sport. Är det sport? Ja. 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 Och eh, en massa annat roligt med Emil, Hiten, Kristensson. Yay!